Hi, we are going to discuss today pulmonary edema and especially neurogenic type. Neurogenic pulmonary edema is a clinical condition arises as acute respiratory distress taking place in conjunction with severe neurological damage or injury. By definition, this condition incorporates a clinical picture of a large accumulation of extravascular pulmonary fluid of acute onset always in uh, the immediate outcome of serious central nervous system lesions, mostly the brainstem. The diagnosis necessitates the exclusion of other identifiable origins of pulmonary lesions or cardiovascular function that may accompany nervous system distress. For instance, bronchopulmonary aspiration or ischemic toxic or traumatic lesions of the heart and lungs. Any sort of acute central nervous system injury may trigger neurogenic pulmonary edema. However, the three most common triggers of the syndrome are cranial trauma, open or closed, subarachnoid hemorrhage, counting rupture of an aneurysm where it is found in more than 50% of cases and less one is epilepsy, a generalized seizure mostly. Other causes uh, has also been uh, reported in some uh, pathological situations such as cervical medullary trauma, a post-operative period of intracranial surgery and meningitis, the occurrence of neurogenic pulmonary edema in a brain-injured patient is associated with poor prognosis as the mortality rate is very high from uh, 60% to even 100%. Let's discuss a little bit of pathophysiology. The full understanding of the pathophysiology of neurogenic pulmonary edema is like a puzzle. The central nervous system disturbance will cause a sympathetic overflow leading to a state of systemic vasoconstriction. This will cause pulling of the blood from the systemic circulation to the pulmonary circulation hence eliciting an increase in the pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure that change uh, the change of pressure will mediate the leakage of intravascular fluid to both the alveoli and the pulmonary interstitial space through two mechanisms two main mechanisms like change of pressure across the alveolar bed dictated by startling force forces and the second the change in permeability on the capillary walls. So on the right side you see this uh, graph with normal size of the vessel and after constricted an increase in pressure and in flux. So this pressure acts like increased, increased uh, hydrostatic pressure and passing of the fluid from the vessel to the interstitium. And capillary permeability at the same time at endothelium suffers and become very vulnerable to passing uh, liquids especially water and other components. Once again to mention the central nervous system uh, will injured will initiate a state of sympathetic overflow. Centers that are responsible for autonomic contribution to the pathogenesis called trigger zones for neurogenic pulmonary edema are the rostral ventrum lateral medulla, area postrema, nuclei of the solitary tract, and dorsal motor vagus, vagus nuclei or nucleus. Experimental studies relate um, NMDA and GABA receptors activity in neurogenic pulmonary edema. Trigger zones, activity on these trigger zones to affect the sympathetic flow 
following central nervous system installed. And the raised intracranial pressure is a common component we encounter in central nervous system injuries, leading to Cushing triad with increased blood pressure, irregular breathing, and bradycardia. Only experimental studies on animals show that an increase in pulmonary artery pressure and extravascular pulmonary fluid in response to increased intracranial pressure. Autonomic nervous system component or parasympathetic contribution. So well known that the cranial nerve 10 vagus provides the parasympathetic supply to the lungs and heart and is elicited during the central nervous system injury. But in the development, uh, in, in the development of uh, neurogenic pulmonary edema, it lacks scientific uh, supporting evidence. So it's not clear about cranial nerve uh, affecting this condition. The main uh, contribution is from systemic vasoconstriction, increases blood pressure, redirection of the blood from the system to the pulmons, and increased venous return and decompensation of the left side of the heart. Cardiovascular and pulmonary systems component are components and hemodynamic changes that occur with sympathetic overflow will cause the movement of blood from system, uh, systemic uh, highly resistant cir circulation to the less resistant pulmonary circulation, resulting in an increase in pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure, leading to the movement of fluid from the capillaries uh, to the lung tissue and interstitial space. Neurogenic myocardial injury, which is mainly dictated by the sudden catecholamine surge, the increase in systemic blood pressure and the venous return will cause an overload of the heart. In this case, left ventricle fails to meet that loading change, hence diastolic dysfunction occur. Increased pulmonary capillary uh, permeability is governed by two possible causes, direct and indirect. Direct through the damage of endothelium of the pulmonary capillaries, indirect response, uh, in direct response to the catecholamines, and indirect through the damage of the capillary bed as a response to the abrupt one set in the pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure. So we have here a scam pulmonary uh, veins with the returning of the blood from the from the lungs, too much blood coming here, left atrium and left ventricle. Dilation of the structures and decompensation. From systemic uh, circulation coming a lot of blood and it is pumped in a, into the pulmonary circulation. Occur an overload of the pulmonary circulation with increased hydrostatic pressure and it is difficult to correlate and maintain. How to make a diagnosis of the neurogenic pulmonary edema? First of all, you should be oriented on symptoms like dyspnea and bilateral basal pulmonary crackles. But also exists a chest X-ray that is important to differentiate between the, this condition and aspiration pneumonitis. With aspiration pneumonitis, the radiographic features take up to a few hours to evolve and up to three weeks to resolve. This is in contrast to the alveolar infiltrates in a neurological or neurogenic pulmonary edema, which occurs instantly after the injury. It should be detected immediately as you suspect the neurogenic pulmonary edema. 
I also need to rule out other pulmonary causes like lung contusion, hematorax, pneumothorax, etc. And the last line, treatment based on the current pathophysiological um, hypothesis, the therapy will be mainly cardiovascular and will aim to increase anotropically, especially by administering beta adrenergic stimulation and the reduction of pulmonary vascular resistance, which is essential, and reduce the intracranial pressure with diuretics like uh, loop diuretics and mainly by uh, osmotic, which is mannitol, administering one milligram, one gram per uh, kilogram. So working on these conditions should be aimed and will resolve at, at least uh, some of the symptoms. Thank you very much and have a good time.